Howdy everyone, John here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kuat Sherpa on our 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, if you're looking for a bike rack with a lot of premium features and more of a compact design platform style rack wise, uh, this is a great choice to go with. It can handle up to 40 pounds, which is relatively nice for what you're getting. Uh, it can handle most road bikes, women's bikes, uh, but maybe some of the fat tire bikes and e-bikes will not be able to handle those. So keep that in mind and maybe figure out how much your bike weighs before you get this. Now, as you can tell, with it also having a front tire hold, this is going to add to the versatility of this bike rack for the fact that you can actually have carbon frame and odd sized and odd uh, shaped frames on this. So your women's bikes, your carbon frame bikes, you aren't going to have to worry about deterioration on that frame or maybe it just wouldn't fit. So that's one of the reasons I like it to have a uh, wheel hold like this. Now, one of the main features of the Sherpa is the tilt-away. Kuat's really good about the tilt-away. It's just a very easy little handle here. All you have to do is hold it, push it down, and then you're good. Something to keep in mind, though, with your Santa Cruz, obviously, uh, let's say we want to get some water or some helmets. You probably can just open up the tonneau cover and reach in, so that's not too much of a deal. But let's see how much room we actually have whenever it comes to letting this down. As you can see, we can get a good amount of room, but it gets right about there and it still isn't fully down. This is enough room to have maybe one of your friends get in and grab your cooler or bigger items, uh, but you can't lay it all the way down, which is unfortunate. I would say it really depends on the bike that you have on there and the placement, but overall something to keep in mind. Now the bike is held in two points. We're going to get the rear wheel cradle off first. It's just a little strap back here. You take that off like that. And then from there, you're going to hold onto your bike. Press this big button. I love the button whenever it comes to the Sherpa. All you're gonna do is push that in, push it away, grab your frame and lift off. So as you can see on our rear wheel cradle, uh, the strap can just be put right back in there. I like to do that right after I take my bike off just so it isn't swaying around, but it actually can rotate. So depending on the size bike and the, uh, re the wheel uh, that you have, how uh, much of a wheelbase you have on that can actually change depending on what you got. Now, the maximum wheelbase that you have on this is 47 inches, which is genuinely good, though the bigger that it is, whenever it gets closer to that 47 inches, you do have to keep in mind that it may, the wheel may come off of just a little bit. I've seen it on very large bikes, so I don't recommend going up to that height. Uh, going from there, you can see that obviously this hook will come down. I like how it's right in place there. And the maximum uh, wheel size that you can have uh, thickness wise is three inches. It's gonna be right here as you can see. So your fat tire bikes aren't gonna work with this, which is unfortunate, but overall it holds that in place and you can just push this down whenever you're finished. So with your Santa Cruz, for the fact that you have a bed, it makes it a little bit tougher to figure out how much room do you have when it comes backing up. So keeping that in mind, let's see how much room we have. We've got about 32 inches whenever it comes to the end of the bed to the end of the bike rack. Another measurement to keep in mind is ground clearance. Now this isn't that big a deal with your Santa Cruz, but something to keep in mind whenever you're going up a large steep hill uh, while your front is going to go up, your back is going to go down. So having that information is always good. Let's see how much room we have at the very end. We're gonna have about 21 inches at the very end from the bottom of the ground and about 12 inches when it comes to the shank. And now another feature to keep in mind is the fact that we can tilt it up, which is going to free up a lot of space when it comes to backing up. So what you're gonna do is press the same lever that you use to tilt it down to tilt it back up and that's gonna give you a lot more space. Now let's check out how much room do we actually get from this. So we're gonna cut that area down to 14 inches right to the end here, which is very good. Uh, and the closest point, something to keep in mind so you don't have anything running into it, it's gonna be around three to three and a half inches. Uh, this isn't gonna get really any closer as long as it's in place and it's held in place, there we go. So you're cutting down on that and you aren't gonna have to worry about it hitting the back of your truck. 
So obviously this is gonna change whenever you have a bike on the back and depending on the size of the bike, but whenever we have it in this collapsed position, as you can see, unfortunately our license plate is covered up, but overall everything else, including your back windshield, your lights, and your camera are not gonna be a problem whenever it comes to this. It's gonna be a two inch shank that's obviously gonna fit in your two inch hitches. It's gonna come with a hitch pin and a hitch pin lock, which as you can see here, very easy to take off and just pull out. And probably worried that the fact that it's not in there anymore, we can actually take a look at our anti-rattle system. So the anti-rattle system is controlled by this knob right here. It's gonna have a cam ball that's in there and tightens down. So let's take a quick look at that. We'll put this pin back in here and show how much jostling you get whenever you don't have that anti-rattle system in place. So right now, as you can see, it's moving around, it's going all over the place, but once we tighten it down, which is very easy to tighten down, uh, that's one of the best things about Kuat, in my opinion, as you're just tightening it, it takes just a little bit of time right about there. And as you move it around, I'm moving the entire vehicle uh, and it's keeping along with it. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side to side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then, onto our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or even uneven pavement. Last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway. So my final thoughts on the Sherpa. If you're looking for a bike rack that has a lot of premium options and a lot of premium design in it, in a smaller, compact, platform style form, this is the one to go with. Uh, I love Kuat, they have a great design, they're very intuitive, and the fact that they're very versatile with their bike racks is great. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is it comes in a multitude of colors, there's three of them, gunmetal gray, which is this one right here. As you can see, the orange accent is really nice. Metallic black and pearl. So let's say you have a different color Santa Cruz and you want to personalize it. That's always something that you can do. And that was a look at the Kuat Sherpa on our 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. My name's John, have a good one.